Welcome to this section of the course where we're going to introduce the concept of torque. Now everybody has probably heard of the term torque um, and everybody probably has a little bit different, different definition from the other guy but what we're going to do here is we're going to define what torque is mathematically and we're going to look at how to solve some problems dealing with torque. Um, now we're kind of building on our knowledge of circular motion. Remember that at first we've talked about linear forces, mass, acceleration, then we moved into rotational motion and we kind of looked at the analog there. Well now we're going to talk about the concept of torque and the basic idea behind torque, one thing that you should remember, is it's kind of force along a circle, okay? Angular force, sort of, okay? When you open a door that's hinged, okay, you're pulling on it and that door is swinging through an angle, well you're kind of pulling around some angular motion there, you're exerting a torque on the door. When you take a, a wrench and you're trying to loosen a nut or something like this, you're trying to kind of exert a force through an angle or something like that, trying to exert and kind of create an angular motion or you're pushing kind of around something, you're exerting a torque, okay? So let's kind of talk about that mathematically. Topic of torque. Okay, um, imagine that you have some kind of a wrench, okay, and I'm going to draw it like this. This is a wrench off like this, okay. The wrench has some distance, some length. Now, instead of using L, I'm going to use R, and you'll understand why in a second. But anyway, it's just the, it's just the, the length of the uh, wrench here. And let's say I've got some nut or something in here and I'm trying to loosen it. Well, you all know from experience that it makes the most sense to kind of push on this guy kind of perpendicular, kind of push kind of straight up as I've had it as I have it drawn here on the board. So I'm going to exert some some force okay like this perpendicular to the wrench. And that's going to create what we call a torque around this pivot point here, okay? The torque uh, is going to be a, a T, but it's going to be a fancy T with a kind of a curvy top, and that's called tau. That's a, a Greek letter, tau, okay? Uh, tau, T-A-U, and it's just a letter. It just means torque, and it's kind of like a T, so it's kind of, kind of easy to remember. The torque, in this case, is as, as I have it drawn here, is just equal to the distance R, the length here, um, times the force I exert, okay? Uh, now, I want to tell you though that the main thing you need to be aware of here is that this force that you put into this equation has got to be the force perpendicular to the object that you're actually pushing, okay, um, in order to calculate the proper torque. So this force is the force that is perpendicular, this is my symbol for perpendicular, to uh, R, and R is just the object that you're dealing with here, okay. So it kind of makes sense. I mean, torque is equal to R times F. So it kind of makes sense. The harder you push, the more torque you exert. It makes sense, right? The, the longer something is, the more torque you exert. Now here's where you start to get a little bit into leverage. If you have a broomstick that's really long, okay, and you're trying to loosen something up, well, you all know from experience that the longer something is, the more leverage you kind of have. It's precisely because the longer something is, as you push up on the end of it, is going to generate a higher torque down at the end over there. So a longer wrench is going to give you more leverage is what we really talk about usually, right? But what it's really doing for you is it's generating more torque for you, which is really the force that's loosening that nut down there. So the longer something is, or the more you push, is going to generate more torque. The only caveat to really be aware of is that this force has got to be, and to use it in this equation, has got to be the force perpendicular here. Now, let's take a little bit uh, more complicated case. Let's say I have a wrench like this. Nothing different, okay? It's also the same length R long, okay? But let's say I don't push on it vertically like this. Let's say I push on it or I pull on it or whatever you want to say off at an angle like this. Now you should know because I've already cautioned, cautioned you, you know, 17 times that you can't just take this force and put it into this equation and expect to get the proper torque because this force has got to be the force that's in the perpendicular direction to the actual object that you're moving. And then clearly here, I'm pulling it off to the side. But what you can do is you can use the magic of vectors and decompose this guy into a component of force this way and a component of force this, this way. And then by using this component of force, then I can use the equation just fine. So. And draw my little dotted lines here. 
there's going to have to be some angle involved anytime you're moving something off at an angle. And I submit to you that this force here, which I'm just going to call um, the force here that's the vertical component of the force, is just going to equal F times the sine of theta. And you should know that and be able to look at the triangle and figure that out. Okay. Once you have this, then you can put that force in here and you'll get the right torque. So over here, the torque is just going to be R times F times the sine of theta. Okay. It's not too hard, you see. Because uh, basically all you're doing is you're decomposing the force and you're getting the component that matters, which is the component that's acting perpendicular here. And you can kind of convince yourself that any force acting in this direction, okay, so let's say you move this force down here and you started pulling on, on it like this. Well, that's not going to generate any torque because that's just going to want to pull the wrench out. You're, you're not going to be able to exert any angu angular force if you're pulling on it like this. You need to be pulling on it up like this. And that's why you use the F sine theta. This is the general form for the equation of torque. Okay, anytime there's an angle involved that's not 90 degrees here, perpendicular, then you'll have to use this guy. And then if you just happen to know that 90 degrees is the angle, you can use this one. And never forget that the sine of 90 degrees is just simply equal to 1. So this, this equation and this equation are exactly the same. In the case over here, where 90 degrees is the angle that you have, well then this just goes off to 1. So it doesn't even matter. So it's not really and truly two different equations, it's just that this is kind of a special case of this equation. Okay?